everybody. Happy Sunday. I'm trying to get my my uh, second computer set up here so I can <laughs> see what's going on. Um, just a second here. I got to see if I can find some comments. And maybe I can turn off the banner. Hi. Hi, Cindy. Just a second here. Let me find my banner. So how was everybody this evening? I had a nice day. I went uh, and met Judy and we went shopping for fabric, my favorite thing to do. <laughs> so we went to Helios in Mount Vernon and uh, that was really fun. I, I got, I had a gift card from some friends for Christmas and so I was able to finally use it. So got something to make a little, little uh, quilt for my, for a little kitty cat quilt. Hi, Jan. So people are coming in. Oh, let me get my comments going here. And um, so anyway, I had a nice day. I went to Riverside, did not win. Oh, <laughs> who said they went to Riverside? Oh, Marianne. Hi, Nancy. Did you get your scan and cut? Everybody's coming in. Awesome. So um, I, I saw this little pillow online. And it was like one of those ones that's like heat pressed, you know, and I thought, oh, that's really cute, but I'd like to do it in embroidery. I did still learning. Okay, good. Cool. Oh, there's all kinds of people coming in now. Awesome. How is everybody this evening? Okay, so, so I saw this little pillow that was like a heat pressed, kind of just a plain little pillow that they just, you know, like screen printed or heat pressed on. And and I thought, well, that's really cool. It has like the state in it. And I that, I thought that would be fun. We could make that. And I've always, um, I play around with several of the things in the software. So we're going to do a couple of different techniques tonight. But the, the little state. So what I did, if you don't live in Iowa, because I've got a bunch of people that don't live in Iowa, just go, what I looked up on Google is I Googled Iowa uh, state shape or Iowa state silhouette shape or something like that. And you ought to be able to find lots and lots of shapes of your state. So just Google the site, your state and ask for like a shape or a silhouette shape or something. Okay. So we're going to do Iowa because I live in Iowa and that's the one I have. Okay. So we're going to do a couple different techniques tonight. We're going to do the technique. Um, and is everybody hearing me? Okay. I, I was having a little trouble with my microphone earlier. Can you hear me? All right. Can get everybody give me thumbs ups if you can hear me, because I I was having mic problems earlier. So, um, but then we're also going. Okay, everybody's hearing me, all right? Awesome. Okay, and then the other thing we're going to do is the lettering is done with the the true type fonts. Yep, sounds good. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I I was having trouble the earlier. Like every week, there's something different that's a problem. <laughs> this week so far, that was the only problem. So. Lips are not matching the voice, okay? Um, I can't, pretty soon you won't see me, so it won't bother you in a little bit. I, I've had that happen before, and I don't know what causes it. So I will, Jan, try going out and coming back in. But I will, um, you won't be seeing me here in a couple minutes. It'll be just the screen. I'll be sharing my screen, so then it won't bother you, okay? All right. <clears throat> no problem with, oh, good, good. But I have had that happen before. Um, so try going out and coming back in. Um, but I will be um, just sh sharing my screen pretty soon. Hello, Becky. Got all kinds of folks here tonight. So, so we're going to do um, the, we're going to do the state. Um, there's a thing in the software and I don't know if some of you have used it, but it's called the magic wand. So we're going to use the magic wand for the state. And the letters are done with the true type fonts and we're going to use that and make them into appliques. Okay. And then we're going to do just some plain lettering down here. Okay. So um, we'll just do a, a variety of little things. I just thought this was a cute little project and I thought it might make a nice um, gift for like, you know, there's a lot of weddings and stuff coming up for the summer. And I thought that might make, make a nice gift and you could just put whatever state, you know, they live in. Okay. So that's what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to lay this up here on the counter. Oops. My counter covered in cat hair because she was up there earlier this afternoon. And I haven't wiped it off yet. 
Okay. So let me go ahead and I'm going to share my screen. And let's see. Hello. Everybody's coming in. I can see everybody's names. Um, I can't see them on, on StreamYard, but I can see everybody's names on Facebook because Facebook's working better tonight. I had trouble with it last week. So, all right. So let me sh share my screen. Share my screen. Not the entire screen. Okay, we'll go down. So pretty soon you should be seeing my computer and then I'm gonna open up my software. So yep, it looks like things are coming up. So I'm gonna open up my um, my Perfect Embroidery Pro software. Well, and you know, it, we all know that this, all of the softwares now are in the one thing called Embroidery Toolshed. The actual software that we're using for the digitizing is Perfect Embroidery Pro. Um, so just so everybody's aware, you know, they're all now it keeps freezing. Jan, that must be you. I'm sorry. All right. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got my, you know, my inspiration today opens up when you open up your software and make sure you're getting the free designs because there's lots of free designs. Now they have these free designs that are on their website. So like the one that's on the house free design, that's on the design, the D dime website. And then, and then over here is the um, designs that are the, the monthly designs, okay? And then if you click on previous months, then you can get the ones if you've missed them. Like I've missed some of the ones from this year, so I need to go back and um, check that. So anyway, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to create a new design. And I'm going to open this up and I'm going to pull this up just a little bit so it doesn't cover up the screen sharing thing at the bottom. All right. So the first thing I like to, to do is to set up a grid, kind of help me know um, how big things are. And I can, I'm just going to set up a one inch grid. And to do with that, I'm going to right click up on this um, top ruler bar, right click on it, and I'm going to go to inches and I'm already in inches. And then I'm going to go down to my grid settings. And I'm, I, right now I've got quarter inch grids. I'm going to put one inch grids. So I'm just going to type 1.0 and 1.0. Something else I was doing, I was using quarter inch grids. Okay. So I'm going to click. Okay. And I'm also going to make sure that I am in, can you enlarge your screen that is showing to us? No, because if I do, it will, um, the stream yard thing gets in the way. And if I hide it, sometimes it goes wonky on me. Well, I just hit it. So maybe hopefully it's still working. <laughs> so yes, then I can make it bigger. So we'll see if, if the little screen sharing thing works <laughs> and doesn't go wonky. Okay. It, that's as big as I can make it. Okay. So I have got my one inch grids. Now, the one thing I am going to check is to make sure that I am using PEP because you can switch back and forth from different uh, the different software that you have by um, going to the little purchases tab. So if you go to the little tab down here and there's the first one is the sequence view, which I use quite often. And then the one at the end looks like a little shopping cart and that's the purchases tab. So then you know which software you have Active. So anything that has a yellow check mark on it is active. And to switch back and forth from the different ones, you click on the little polka dots over here next to the check, to the right of the check. And then you say to make it default. So in this case, that option is not there. So I know that my Perfect Embroidery Pro is my default. If I had not, like let's say I was maybe in Word Art and Stitches instead, it says make default. So then that's how you go back and forth from the different softwares. You can also use the other elements of the software in Perfect Embroidery Pro. Um, and those are all kind of hanging out over here on far right. There's a bunch of these different things like this is, um, oh, these are the things from Word Art and Stitches. And some of these are from my block piecer in my block in my embellisher, you know, my quilt embellisher. So some of these other pieces over here are from those other 
softwares. Okay. Some of the tools will not show up in Perfect Embroidery Pro that are in those other softwares. So I usually go to that software when I'm wanting to use it. It's like, so like I've been using my block piecer quite a bit because I want to show everybody block piecer pretty soon. It's a really cool program because you can make quilt blocks in it, um, in the hoop. And then I've been doing, working with that quite a bit lately. So that's why I thought maybe I was in that one, but I am in Perfect Embroidery Pro. So we're using PEP in P Perfect Embroidery Pro for tonight's class. So Denise, this is as big as I can get. I hope that's okay. That's just, This is as big as I can go. Okay. So I called this my home Iowa pillow, home state pillow. You can, you can uh, make any state, obviously, by just finding your own state shape. So if you live in Florida, if you live in New York, just go find a shape um, for your state and use your state in it instead. Okay. So I have created a new design. The first thing I wanted to do is I want to put a piece of artwork up here that will give me what the inside finished area of my pillow is. So I was having a little bit, oh, just a second, I see what I was doing. Let me let me fix something. I, I see what Denise is asking about. I can fix that, just a second. Just a minute. I gotta get back up on StreamYard. Um, I need to go to, let's try this one. How about that? Is that better? It defaulted to a weird setting. So is that better? There you go. Now, I hope that's better. They, um, it defaulted to a weird setting that it had me in there and I don't, I just need the screen. So, okay. They used to always just default to just the screen. <laughs> okay. You didn't need to see me talking. So, okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an artwork, um, boundary just for me so that I can um, see how big the inside of my pillow is. So I then I could judge how big my design is. So I'm going to go up to my artwork tool here, which is the pencil, the square and the circle. And I'm going to get my rectangle. And I'm just going to start in the top left hand corner, kind of draw down to the bottom right. And I'm just going to transform it. I think I transformed it to, yeah, eight by 12. So I'm just going to get my selection tool. I'm going to transform up here in the properties box and I'm going to tell it to be 12 inches wide. Whoops. I'm going to, I'm going to deselect maintain aspect ratio because it was kind of a funky size. So 12 and then I want it to be eight inches. Yeah. Eight inches tall. Okay. So it kind of disappears off the, off the screen. So now I'm going to go up here to the zoom which is right next to the little, little, um, like little start, stop, little stop sign. And I'm going to go to fit. So then I can see my square that I just made. And it's also not centered on my work area. So I'm going to go up to the little uh, ruler bar. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to center origin so that now it is centered in my workspace. That is the working area for the top front of my pillow. Okay which is eight by 12. All right. So I've got my work area kind of defined here. It doesn't matter what color it is. I'm going to switch back to my sequence view so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to create first my home text. Now the um, home text, we're going to use true type fonts. So my true type fonts may be different than what yours are on your computer. Okay. So I happen, I tried to choose one that's a fairly common one. So hopefully most of you will have this. So to get the, the true type font in here, I'm going to go to file, import TT text or in true type text. So import true type text. And then this little box comes up and I'm going to tell it, um, I'm going to put in my text that I want. Now, I just want three letters because I'm going to use the letter O for home. It's going to be the state. So I'm just going to use H, M, and E. So I'm just going to type H, M, and E, and I'm not going to use capital letters. I'm just going to use lowercase letters this time. Okay. So the O is going to be the state silhouette. 
And then I'm going to look at my fonts and you can choose your font by clicking the little dots next to the word Arial. Okay. So there's like three little dots there. And the font that I use was called Comic Sans. So I'm going to click, I'm just going to type C on my keyboard and it'll take me down to the C's. And then I'm going to go down here. I was hoping it was on this computer because I think I digitized this originally at work. <laughs> so sometimes I don't always have the same fonts on each computer. So I think it was, it's, it must be getting close. Oh, there it was. I think I dismissed it. Comic Sans is my fave. Yeah, it is. It's, it's just a cute, it's a kind of a com or um, it's kind of a cute kind of whimsical font. Okay. So here it is. Comic Sans MS. That's the one I used. Okay. And then I'm going to look over here at the style and the style, I want it to be bold. So, cause I want it to be kind of as wide as possible since I'm going to make it into a, um, since I'm going to make it into a, um, uh, applique. Sorry, I can't talk today. All right. So I've got it bold. The size comes at 375. So I'm just going to leave it as big as possible. That's pretty big. So I'll just leave it alone. We can fix that in a little bit. So I'm going to click OK at the bottom of this little screen. So I'll click OK. And now it's chosen in my little box here. And then I'm going to click OK one more time. And then it's going to bring up my letters. So here's my letters. In fact, I'm going to bring my pillow over here and set it in front of me so I can, so I remember about what I did. <laughs> I don't always write all the numbers down, so I just kind of do this by look. So, all right, so move the letters to one side for now. So we've got these letters. I'm just going to kind of move them over here, just get them out of my way for a minute. Because I'm going to go ahead and do my silhouette for um, my state now. And... And just quickly, just to make this easier, let's go ahead real quick. And I'm just going to, while those are selected, I'm going to go down at the bottom and I'm going to right click on color number two so that the letters are, if you see in my sequence view now, my my artwork, you know, my eight by 12 by square is, is one color and then the letters are its second color. So that way we can kind of see what's going on. And we'll, we'll be working with different colors in a little bit too. So, okay. So now I'm going to create my silhouette. So I needed a little picture to do this. I, you can, you, there's a couple ways you can do this. Obviously you can, you can draw it. You can just take the little pen artwork tool and draw around the picture. So we're going to bring in our backdrop first to do that. So I'm going to go over to the left to my backdrop tool. And then I'm going to go select my um, little backdrop. And it was in this little folder that's home state pillow. And then here's my little picture. It's a little PNG. Could be a JPEG. Um, it needs to be, for the, for the way we're going to do this with the magic wand, it needs to be a fairly good, clean picture. Um, so if it is not a real clean picture, you may have to draw it. But that's okay because it's not hard to draw. So I'm just going to bring this little backdrop in and I'm going to click open. Okay. So there's my state of Iowa. Okay. And you can see it's pretty, it's a pretty clean little picture. Um, if it's not, you can, like I said, you can always draw it, but I'm going to show you something. Um, when we first got this software years ago, I used the magic wand tool quite a lot. And when we got the software back um, after 2014, um, I had a little more trouble with this little function working as well. So I didn't use it a whole lot and I haven't shown it to you for a while, but you know, they've worked on it and it works really quite well. So if you have a decent picture, this is really fast. So watch this. So I'm going to go up here to my artwork tool. So we need a tool to draw with first and I'm going to get my pen. Okay. But I'm also going to choose, so that was the artwork tool. And then if you go over a couple of symbols, this is the magic wand. And I'm going to click on that too. So see, they're both selected. They're both blue at the top. And then I'm just going to come down here. And this is my, my picture. This is that JPEG or PNG image. I'm just going to click on the state of Iowa. And it just 
outlined the entire thing. So if I turn off my backdrop, look, look at that beautiful outline of my state of Iowa. And all I did was just make one click. Wasn't that cool? So this is still, obviously, this is right now still um, artwork. And you don't have to draw. So if your if your picture is more, isn't that cool? I mean, and this works with like I could have done. Well, let's let's back up. So I could have done. Let's bring the backdrop back up. I could have done. Let's say I wanted to make it a fill. So if I go up and get my complex fill tool, okay, and I can still have my there's my my magic wand. I could go down here and click it, and then right click, and then look. Now it's a fill. Isn't that awesome? So you can use that with any of the drawing tools. This, in this case, I was just using my pen tool. I could have used my applique tool, but I think I, yeah, I just used the artwork tool. I could have used the applique tool instead, whichever one you want. So, so here's like the applique, cause this is gonna be an applique. So I could have chosen the applique tool with my magic wand, okay? And then I could have done the same thing down here. And then look, there's the applique. So you could have done it that way as well. So I just wanted to show you a little bit more involved with getting instead of, I like I often draw with the artwork tool. Um, if I had to draw this, then of course, what I would do is I would, you know, maybe make this bigger so I could see it better on the screen. And then I would go up here to my pen tool under artwork, and then I would not have my magic wand selected. And then I would just start drawing. You know, I would just hold my control key down and I just draw around the outside edge. I mean, it's it's very possible to do that. Okay. But that pen tool or that, that magic wand tool is pretty awesome. So we're just going to do that. And I am going to, yeah, so I, I'm just going to use that one. And I'm going to turn this up. So look at that. So there's my state of Iowa. I thought it turned out really good. And um, this was a pretty decent picture. So like I said, if you don't have a real clear picture, if it's very blurry or very pixely, it may not work as well. Um, but I thought this one worked very well. And it looks like the state of Iowa. So I'm going to go with that. Okay. And I just love that. So that's something I used a lot. And I noticed that they have done a lot of work with it because it works so much better now. And um, it it's fun to use like with um, coloring book pages and all kinds of stuff. So I've used it quite a bit. Okay. And I said on the bottom of my little page here, you will need a pretty good picture for this to work well without lots of cleanup. Because sometimes I have to go in and like do a lot of clean up with when it comes to the nodes, you know, the little points with my shape tool over here. And you can see this one has pretty, pretty, not a whole lot of nodes on it. So it did a good job of making the design. Okay. So now I'm going to turn my page here. And again, I was using my shape tool. I said, you know, sh use your shape tool to clean up as you, as you need. Any suggestions on where to find a clean picture? Um, what I do is I kind of look at them, Shannon. Um, when I Google them, I, I look at, you can, they usually say how big the picture is. So if it looks clear to you on your screen, it's usually pretty decent. And you can see how many pixels it is. So don't pick like the teeny tiniest little picture. Pick one that's a little bit bigger and, and that'll help. Okay. And, you, and they usually say on the pictures, like when you're looking at them on Google, how many pixels they are. So don't pick the ones that are teeny, teeny, tiny, okay? All right. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's going to look good. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my back. Whoop, I got my backdrop turned off already. I don't need to clean it up. I think it looks just fine as it is. And I'm going to go ahead and back to Zoom and to fit so that I can see everything that's going on up here. All right, so now we need to create the word home using the Iowa shape as the O. Now, um, I have to kind of, you kind of have to play around with it. So what I did, what I did is I'm, I'm kind of looking at my, my pillow over here. I just sort of moved my letters around and whoops, let's, let's put this back. I'm going to move my, my, um, going to select all my letters together and I'm going to bring them out so that they're approximately all the same size together. Okay. And that 
is getting pretty close. I can, I, on my pillow, I had my H and my, um, let's see here, I'm going to select these separately and I'm going to pull this over here. And then here's my E and then I kind of use my grid lines to help me get things kind of lined up here. Now I did do some stuff with the letters but I kind of pulled them up a little bit so that they were a little bit elongated. So let's do that. I'm just going to select all my letters together. And this is how I did this. I didn't do this real mathematically. I just kind of started looking at the way I thought they looked good. And I just wanted them a little bit more tall. And I think that looks pretty good. I didn't mark any sizes down. I just kind of um, I just kind of like looked at it to see what I liked. Now, I think that my Iowa needs to be a little bit bigger also. And maybe I think I pulled it up just a little bit so that it was a little bit elongated also. But I just wanted to look like the word home when I get it all organized here. So let's just kind of look at it. I'm going to lay this down on a grid line so that I can kind of tell if everything's sort of lined up. So let's just see how we do. So I think it's going to be too big yet. But we'll just get it kind of organized. Here's my E. And you can tell if you've got things kind of lined up because you can um, use a grid line to help you. Okay. And I think I'm going to raise my eye up a little bit. I'm just going to pull it up a little bit on the screen. And it looks pretty good. So let's, let's just... I do most of this by sort of... Um, you know, just eyeballing it. Now it is going to be too long yet. So I do have a measurement in here to tell you for the length in a second. So I think it is, let's see, create the word, change. Okay. So I got it kind of the way I want it. It is kind of big yet. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's just make it a little shorter for right now. And then we may still have to change it a little bit. That looks pretty good. I think maybe the E and the M. Let's see if maybe these need to be a little further apart. Okay. Because remember, these are going to be appliques. Right now, it's just artwork. So we're just playing around with the artwork. But sometimes you need to move things apart so that there's room for the stitches, you know. Okay. It looks pretty good. And then the other thing I wanted on here was I wanted a little heart at the end. So there's a little heart, like a like a period almost, um, at the end. Um yeah, at the end of my home. So I'm going to go up to, did you know that there's more drawing tools? We haven't used all of these, but if you go up to the artwork tools, look, there's a heart. You know, there's a triangle, there's diamonds, there's, and, but there's a heart. So I'm just going to grab my little heart and let's just make it any size we want. We'll just make it, let's just guess. That looks good. Looks pretty good. So I'll just make it a little bit closer and it's going to be sort of like, I want it kind of even with the bottom of my E, I guess. So let's just select all of these together and pull them down to a grid line again. So I can kind of tell if I've kind of got them lined up. Okay. So again, I do a lot of this by just eyeballing it and looking at how it looks. I think that looks pretty good. Still think that the, the um, let's move my IO over a little bit. I think the E and the M are still just a little close together. When you get the stitches in there, you know, you don't want them to be too close. Okay. So obviously, you know, this is getting a little bit too big for my area. So we'll get this organized here in a minute and get a size. Okay. So that looks, that looks better. All right. Now I did make, decide on a size. Um, I wanted it to be about 10 inches wide. So remember I told you that my pillow area here, that first rectangle we put in, is um, is going to be uh, 12 inches long. So we need about an inch or so on each side. So I didn't want it to be too long. So I made it 10. So let's go ahead and select all of these items. Okay the home and the little, the little heart at the end. And I'm going to go over here to transform in my uh, properties box. And I want it to be about 10 inches wide. And let's, let's do the width. I'm going to click the maintain aspect ratio right now and let's make it 10 inches. Whoops. 10 inches here. 
and see what it makes for our height. So then the height is a little bit short. So that's when what I did is I kind of pulled this up a little bit because I wanted it about 3.75. So that's how I got my elongation a little bit. I made it just a little bit um, taller so that it elongated a little bit and gave me just a little more height. So that, that looks pretty good. I like that. So it's actually 10 inches long and about 3.75 inches high. So yes, so I, I elongated the Iowa a little bit and I elongated the letters. I just let it look good. So, all right. So now I want to make sure that all of these are centered in my, in my um, area. And you can see up here by the little, the little um, selection boxes that they're not on the zero line. So I'm just going to move this all over, have it all selected together. And I'm just going to move this all over there. Now I don't like my heart now because see, I kind of, you know, elongated my heart. So let's pull the heart down a little bit. Let's make it a little smaller. I didn't like the heart elongated like that. So we'll just change the heart just a little bit. Okay. Made it look kind of wonky looking, didn't it? Made it long, long and skinny. And I think we're just a little bit long now, but I think it'll be okay. All right. So let's center this back up again on the zero line. So I'm just a little bit over this way. There we go. Okay. Okay. So I changed. So what I want to do is I added my heart, rearranged it. So it's all about 10 inches tall and 3.7 and five inches high. And I want to change my colors. So we did a little bit of this earlier. I want my outline to be color number one. So my outline, my, you know, my rectangle of my home, of my pillow front is color number one. We did that. And then I want the rest to be color number two. So right now my, how, my home, uh, my Iowa silhouette and my heart are actually um, color number one again. So I'm going to make those color number two also. So I have those two selected and then I'm going to right click on color number two. So then they're all the same color. Okay. Then I'm going to copy and paste. I wanted to do something to show you how I make a cut file. If you want to cut these out with your scanning cut or with like, um, can you use clip art? Yes, you can use clip art if it is in the right format for a backdrop. Otherwise, it would be artwork. Cindy, does that make sense? Some of the formats come in as artwork and some of the formats come in as a backdrop. So you need to know what your your art, your clip art, which format it is, how you can use it. So your the answer is yes, but I'm not sure what your format is. OK, so I wanted to show everybody how I often make a cut file. So sometimes when I have like letters like this, now these I didn't actually cut them in advance. I cut them um, in the hoop because they were pretty simple, open letters. OK, so you don't need to do this, but I wanted to show you how I do this. So if I want to make an SVG file, this is how I would do it. I like to choose all of my artwork, my whole, my whole thing, I'm going to select that whole thing and I'm just going to copy it and paste it. And then I'm going to make those color number three, which is going to be the green. So I will just leave color number two in the, in the um, design and it will become my cut files. Okay. So I'll show you that in a, in a little bit. Okay, the color number two artwork will remain in the design. This can be exported as a cut file later if you want to use pre-cut your fabrics. So that's why I did this. So that's, I don't always do this, but I did it tonight just so I can show you that and I'll show you that at the end, okay? All right, so now we're gonna work with color number three, which is going to be our actual appliques, okay? That's the second set of artwork. So here's our, here's our second set of artwork. We're going to select all the pieces together because these are all going to be appliques, right? So I'm going to select all of them. 
by going over here to my sequence view and I'm going to select the, the main color so then they're all selected. I'm going to right click on them. I'm going to convert to and I'm going to convert to an applique. Got to find it. There it is. Applique. All right. Now, I wanted these appliques to be relatively wide, so I chose a satin stitch. I like satin stitch. You can use other ones. There's lots of different choices here. You can use motifs. You can use all kinds. I have a few extra new ones because I have that new patch, um, that new patch software. So there's a few new ones now on my list here that you may not have. But let's just use satin tonight because that's I like satin stitches. I'm going to make it four millimeters wide. So let's make it wider than it than it shows here. But I like my stitch length. And what that is referring to is like your placement and your tack down line stitch length when it's doing a straight stitch. I want that to be shorter. 3.5 is very long. So I'm going to do 2.5. I wanted to do in my, I'm going to digitize this with both a placement and a tack down line so that if you are not pre-cutting your fabric that that tack down line is in here. So if you are pre-cutting your fabric, you could just leave the placement line and not have the tack down. So that's up to you, but I'm gonna leave them both in here because then I have the option of either cutting my fabric or not cutting my fabric in advance, okay? So I'm gonna do both of them. Here's the placement line, the little checkbox, and then the tack down line can actually be a run, can be a zigzag or none. So I'm just gonna leave it be a run, that's fine. And then I wanted to change the colors. Okay, now the other thing that we haven't done too many times is you notice that we have a letter right now that um, has a hole in the middle, right? The letter E has a hole. So we need to adjust for the holes on this one because there is a hole in the center, you know, like the letter B, the letter R, you know, any O's, B's, A, you know, that anything that is that has a hole in the center. So the letter E. So we're going to adjust for the holes as well. Depends on our name. Like I have an A in my name, which would have that as well. Okay, make sure I don't miss anything. And then I'm going to inset to 60%. So I like to have a little bit more of the sewing on the, on the fabric, on the inside than outside. So we're going to do 60%. And then I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And there is um, our, all of our appliques. So now you'll, when I chose these appliques and chose it to also to tack or to change the colors, I should say, that means that it will change the color from the like the, the placement lines will be one color and then the tack down lines will be a different color so that the machine will stop in between. If I had not chose that, everything would be the same color. So then you would have to go back and change all the colors so the machine would stop. So that automatically did that for us. Okay. Let's see, what else do I wanna do? I'm trying to see how what order I did this in been a little bit since I've done it, so I can't remember which order. So let's go ahead and we got our fam we, we're going to put our family name in now. So these are all appliques over here. Okay. I'm going to add my family name. So I'm going to go get my text tool now. So go up here to my T and I'm going to go down here and click on the screen. And then I used, um, I just used a basic for the family name. I used times and I'm just going to use one of the regular built-in fonts. So let's go down to times here. Oh, must have missed it. S T times. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to leave the letters at, well, let's see. I think I made them 0. 0.6. Yeah. 0. 0.6 inches tall. I kind of did a kind of a sample to see how big they needed to be. So let's try these at 0.6. I think that was pretty good. And then I'm going to click apply. Go up here to the little box where I can type. And I'm just going to type um, the Schwartz family. The Schwartz family. 
Okay. And you can do any, you can just put the name on there. You don't have to put anything on the bottom at all, but I just wanted it to say the Schwartz family. So I'm going to do that. Click apply again. And there is my lettering. So let's do to fit again. Anytime this happens, if you go up to the zoom and say to fit, it works best. So to fit. And then I'm going to go grab before I get, make a mess here. I'm going to grab my selection tool so I can move this over. Otherwise I pull a whole letter out or something and I'm going to get it all lined up on that zero line again. Let's bring it down here. Okay. Get it centered up on my zero line because the middle selection boxes are going to let you put it on the zero line together. So then you know, everything's organized. And then let's do the, um, let's do the, the, I did established and like the wedding date or the wedding year. I just did my parents' wedding year, 1947 is when they were married. So let's go get the text tool again. And I'm gonna click on the screen again, oh, one more time. And then I'm gonna do, I think I did Diana for this one. So let's do, go find Diana in the list, Diana, okay. And then I'm gonna type in, um, established. They usually do a capital E, ST, and then a period. And then I did the, the, the year, 1947. Okay. Now these, I think I made half inch letters. Those seem to be a pretty decent size and we'll click apply. Okay. And then I'm going to up here again, you know, when it does this kind of stuff, this is when you go back to the zoom and to fit, to fit is our friend. That's what Kathy, Kathy Quinn always used to say, to fit is our friend. So you go back up here and grab the second line of text. And I'm also going to center that up on that zero line so that I can kind of see where I like it. And I can tell if you look up here with the grid, see, I've got about an inch above. See, the top of my H is about an inch down from the top. And then this is about an inch from the bottom. So we can still organize this just a little bit if we want it to be about the same. So, you know, we may just need to move things around just a little bit yet. Okay. All right, so I'm just using the zero line. I need to fit again here. Um, I like to use that. That's a good way to center things. So I'm happy with my home. Let's just select all of those. Make sure that looks even on there. And then let's check the letters again. Looks pretty good. Pretty good. And then I also am going to look at the up and down. So we have about an inch above and about an inch below. Okay, because we put one inch grids up. Okay. And I also want to check the length. So let's check the length of home one more time to see if we're pretty close to the 10 inches. We need it to be right at about 10. And I'm a little big now because, you know, we, we added some satin stitches, right? So I might bring this down just a smidgen to 10. So I'm just going to do that with aspect ratio selected. Oops. And click apply. And now it is like 3.78 tall. So that's about where I wanted it. That looks pretty good. And then I brought it down in the way I had it kind of organized. So that looks pretty good. Okay. Now this is going to be, um, this is going to be kind of my basic design now. You know, we've got it pretty much done. So I want to show you now, I'm just going to show you now how to, if you want to cut out you know, the H, the, the shape of the Iowa, the M, the E, and the heart in advance with your, your, your um, like scanning cut, for instance. I'll show you how to do that now. So what I'm going to do, though, is I don't want it to export this outline because that outline was just something I used to help me know how big my fabric was. So I'm going to delete that first. I'm just going to select it and delete it. So I don't need that. But these other artworks, remember we had the red, the color number two artworks. These are still in there. And what I'm going to do is go up to file and export artwork. So remember, there's still those five artworks in there, the word home, the heart and the Iowa. I'm just going to export artwork. And again, you do not have to do this, but this is how I would tell you to do it if you want to pre-cut. 
So at this point, then I'm going to call it home. All right. And you choose then the type of cutter, depending on your cutter, you need different formats. So you can use SVG, which is a very common one, H or AI, which is Adobe Illustrator. Um, I personally am going to use FCM, which is my cutting file for my scan and cut. So I'm, that's what I'm going to use. Okay. And then you can see, I already have that in my little, in my little, um, folder here. So I'm actually going to just put this on my desktop and then I would just click save. So then what it does is it makes those cut files that you can put on a stick and bring it into your scan and cut. So let me show you here what it looks like a little bit. It's right here. You can kind of see the outline on it. And that is then my cut files if I want to do it that way. Okay. So that I just wanted to show you that. And how I do it is I just leave a set of my artwork pieces that I made into my appliques in the design, and then I just export it later. Okay, so that's how I did it. And I did not, like I said, I didn't cut mine. I actually cut them in the hoop this time. Okay. Now, the one thing I found, um, I told you that what we did is we um, changed the colors. Um, when we chewed, made the appliques, we told it to change the colors, which it does very well, but it breaks up, the software has always done this and it breaks up things strangely. No, Lynn, normally I don't. I just leave them in there because they will not sew. It's just artwork, it won't sew. So I just leave them in there so that if I ever need, if I lose my file, I can export it again. So I just leave them in there. The one that I wanted, to get rid of was the outline that we made just for the top of the pillow. That one I don't want to cut. So I would leave the other ones just in the design because they won't in my in my C2S file. Because then if I need to export it again, I have them. Okay. So the one thing I've always learned about this software, it's changed a little bit the way it breaks up the design. So like we told it to change the colors well, it changes the colors, but what it likes to do is it likes to do like the red for the placement line and then the green for the tack down line. And then it goes back to whatever color your applique piece is. So like our applique was the third color, third color. So it must be, it's going to make the other two p colors a different one. But what it likes to do is it likes to add like the the placement line is a color, the tack down line is a color, and then the applique is a color, but then it likes to stick the next placement line with the applique, like the satin stitch over the top of the previous letter. So I find that annoying because I often need to change colors or fabric there. So I don't like that, that it always breaks it up and sticks a placement line with your cover stitches is what it's doing. And I've always thought that was weird and I can't figure out why they do that, but they just, that's how the software works. So this is how I take care of that. I said the software breaks up the applique strangely. I like to sew placement, tack down, satin stitch, and then move on to the next design, the next part of the applique. I don't like to do all the appliques and then have to go change all the colors back and do all the satin stitches. Cause I find that I, I just, I don't like that. So I like to do them as I'm going so I can put the same color of thread in. Okay. So I wanted to do my home in, and that's, this is how I sewed it. I'm not going to do it like that in the outline or in the sequence view, but I wanted to do my H, my M and my E in blue and my, Iowa and my heart in red. So I didn't want it to be doing a placement line for the Iowa in the same color as the home because that's not the same color I was going to use. So I don't like to have to switch the colors in the machine any more than necessary. So this is and so I, I like to go from, you know, and do the whole piece at once. So let's clean up the appliques so that they sew more logically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose each applique first so I can see them 
And you can see also that it only shows the word applique here, right? And we've done this before. The last class, I think we did this. So I'm going to go into applique, the first one, which is the H that's chosen. I'm going to right click and I'm going to break up the path because I want to look at what it does. So here is the placement line. Here is the tack down line. And then here is my satin stitch. So what it did is it made my placement line the green color number three, and then it made this, the the um, tack down line color number two, looks like color number two, or no, color number four, sorry. Yeah, color number four. And But then it goes back to color number three again. Okay, so sometimes when it, when it does this, it, it adds that placement line, and then it gets really hard to know where you're at. So let's go ahead and do the second one. So here's M. Okay, so we'll do the M. And I'm going to break up the path. I've got it chosen. I'm going to break up the path so I can see all the pieces to that. So here is my M down here. Okay, so here is the placement line. Here is the tack down line. Whoops, sorry. sorry. Where'd it go? So this is what it does. Okay, so here's the, the applique or the, the um, covering stitch for the H. But then the run for the M is the same color. Okay, and I don't like that. And then, okay, here's the run, then the placement line for the M. All right, so let's just go do all of these and then we'll go sort this all out. Sometimes you just have to do them all and sort it out. So here's the E. I'm going to right click and I'm going to break up the path so I can see all the pieces of that particular one. So see again, if you can see this right here in the letter H satin stitches, it put the placement line for the M in the same color. And then you can't, it doesn't stop then. Okay, so here is my satin stitch for my M, but then it also then put the placement line for the E in the same color. So this is how it does it. And it's weird because I have trouble finding out where stuff is then. So let's see, I'm going to do the other appliques. Where did they go? They're hiding here. Okay, there's the E. And then we got a couple more we got to break apart. Okay, so I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to break this up and then we'll look at the state of Iowa down here. And this is how I learned to digitize. You just have to go slowly through all these little pieces so you know where the stuff belongs. Okay. And then there's the satin stitch. And then this is the last one we haven't broke up yet. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to break up the path. I'm going to go down here and then like, here's the placement line, but then it's stuck that I'm sorry, the placement line, it's stuck in with the applique from the last one. So that's why it gets me very confused. So to take care of that problem, I've got them all broken up. Now I found an easy way to do it. Okay. Change the applique, the word applique. We're going to change all of those to the same color. So just the word applique. So I'm going to go down. Here's my first one. That's my H. Just look, look for the word applique in your sequence view. I'm going to go down to the second one. Here it is. I've got my control key held down. There's the M. Okay. And then here's the third one. There's the E. Okay. And then I'm going to go down a little further. And there's my, my Iowa. And I'm going to down a little further. I'm looking for the word applique. And there's my heart. All right. And I'm just, I've got them all chosen now, just the applique part. That's the satin stitches. And I'm going to go over down here and I'm going to right click on the color number five. Okay. That way, when you look now at the order over here under the artwork, now there's three different colors. And so you can do each letter as you're going and you can put any color in you want. So like my H and then the M and the E. I kind of did those because they were all blue, you know, because I wanted them to be the same color. And then I didn't have to change the color in between. And then the house or the, the Iowa and the heart, I wanted the same color. And they're at the end. So let's look at the sequence view. So here is the H placement line, the H tack down line, and then 
the satin stitches. Okay, then we'll look at the next one. Then here is the letter M, the placement line. Here's the tack down line. And here's the satin stitches. And they're all in order. They're right next to each other. So let's do the next one. Here's the E placement line, the E tack down, whoops, tack down line. There we go. Sorry. And then the last one is going to be the satin stitches for the E. Okay. Then it's going to do Iowa. So here, and I didn't move any things of these around. We digitized them in this order. So I always tell people when you digitize, if you kind of know how you want to sew it out, try to get to digitize it in that order so you don't have to fiddle with moving things around very much. So we already had it in the right order. All right, so then we did our, our here's Iowa, the placement line, then the tack down line, whoops, sorry, my mouse is weird. Then the tack down line and then the satin stitches. And then it's gonna do the placement line for the heart, the tack down line for the heart and the satin stitches for the heart, okay? Yes, that is correct, Shannon. So that's why I don't like it when it does, it likes to combine the satin stitches with the next placement line. And that is, I, I don't like that because sometimes then it's real hard for fabric. Yes, the machine will stop after each color. Yes, it will. So, cause I've got it organized now that each one is a separate color, but they're together. So I have H, there's three, colors for the H, three colors for the M, three colors for the E, three colors for the Iowa, and three colors for the heart. Because we all know there are three parts to an applique, a placement line, a tack down line, and a, and a satin stitch or a covering stitch. Okay. But I have them now all in the same order and they stop after each one. So I can use, I can, I can easily leave my thread the same and and change the threads as I'm going. Now I didn't change the threads in the color. Um, so it comes up right on the screen because it doesn't matter. I can use any color I want as long as it match, you know, whatever you want for your fabrics. Okay. All right. Otherwise it combines the satin with the next placement line. That's the problem that I was always having. So I that's how I've figured out how to change that is I just need to change my appliques to another color. All right. So there is our home. That's how you digitized it. We just did, we did applique with true type fonts. We used the wizard, the, the magic wand, I'm sorry, with the, with the um, pen tool to do the Iowa. We used the artwork tool, the little heart to draw the heart down here. And we just made appliques and change the color so that it would sew nice and evenly. So it's gonna do H, do all the stuff for the H, all the steps for the M, all the steps for the E, then the then the Iowa, and then the heart. Okay? Because I did mine in two colors. So I did H, M, E in blue, and I did the Iowa and the heart in red. And then the lettering, of course, is just sewing. It's just stitching. So I did that in black. So I'll show you my pillow again here in a minute. All right. So I think I'm happy with that. So it's going to do all the applique first. I'll just leave my other artwork in here. And then it's going to do, it does the applique and then it does the letters. So I think I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go up to file. I'm going to save as, and you always want to save your C2S file. And what that is, is your working file. So if you need to go back and fix something later, you can go back and fix it in the actual working file. So I'm going to change it to C2S. I'm going to click save. And then I'm going to go ahead and go file, save as. And then you, then you save it in the save as type, save it as whatever your embroidery machine is. So my embroidery machine needs PES version nine. So I'm gonna do PES version nine and save that. And that is then my stitch file, okay? Yes, Shannon, it does. So Shannon asked if you can see it stitch out. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. So there's a little thing up here. It looks sort of like a little speedometer on your car. It's called the slow redraw. So if I click on that and I click on the simulate button, it will draw. So here's our design. So there's the placement line, the tack down line, 
and the satin stitches for the H. That's the first thing. So I'll just kind of go faster through the H. We don't need to watch it satin stitch. There we go. And then here is the placement line coming up for the M. And then there's the tack down line for the M it's slightly inside that. And then it does the, that's a, it goes over it twice. And there's the satin stitches for the M. So we'll make that go faster. And then here is that coming up the tack down for the E. I'm sorry, the placement line for the E. Okay. There's the tack down line for the E. And for some reason, just so you know, that, that letter, it, the placement line's kind of weird the way it's sewed. And I tried several different things to make it better. Every now and then I'll have something kind of weird with a uh, true type font. So it must have been. So here's our Iowa placement line and tack down line. And then it's going to do the satin stitches. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing over here with the, with the, there's our placement and tack down for the heart and the satin stitches. Okay. And then there's our lettering. So here's my letters that I typed in the Schwartz family established 1947. Okay. So then you can see how it, so, so that I like it when it sews each letter individually, because then I can, it's easier on the thread changes. So to get rid of that, when you're done watching, you just go click on it again and it goes away. Okay. So that is the home pillow. It, it was sort of like, um, it was very, it was just fun. It was something that I want you to use your software just for something fun. So see how easy that was to just digitize a small design. I mostly, I use built-in lettering. I use some applique and it turned out so cute and you can use any state in here, any letters. So me, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Hopefully not sure where my screen sharing went. <laughs> Suck it here. Here it is. When they hide it, then I can't find it. So let me stop sharing my screen and then I'm going to go back up to camera. Okay, there we go. But then here's my pillow. And it, I thought it turned out really good. I like it. And I, and I gave you in the instructions. So for those of you who don't have this downloaded yet, I did give you this design. So if you live in Iowa, you know, I've got this design in there as a, as a stitch file and you can, you can sew it out and then you can just, you know, skip my words and then you can put your own words in the bottom with your machine even. Okay. Um, but I also put in some stitching instructions. So how to sew it out. Give me a second here. I got the instructions here. So I gave you cutting instructions on how I made the pillow. And um, I had like a background fabric that was 11 by 15. I put shape flex on the back of that. So there's shape flex on the back of this kind of light colored stars. And then I used applique fabric. And I told you about how big a piece you needed for all of them. And then the backing pieces, there's two backing. This is like a envelope back. Okay. And then the border fabrics right here. How big to cut them to sew them. And I showed, I told how I sewed it. So the, the instructions, the actual embroidery instructions are in here. If you digitized it the same way I did, that that's how you would sew it. And then I tell you how to assemble the pillow. Okay. But I encourage you to make your own. They're, they're easy to do. Um, they're fun. And then what a nice gift for somebody, you know, for a wedding, for a bridal shower, you know, for just for a family, for fun, and that it was really fun to do. Where do you get the state outline? So, Nancy, what I did with the state outline is I just Googled. I went to Google and Googled Iowa um, Iowa silhouette outline or something like that. Okay. Oh, did you make it with me? Awesome. So, um, so just use, just Google your state. Cause I, cause I live in Iowa. So I just got, I just found an outline, a nice, and you want it to be a pretty decent outline because then it's going to, so it's going to be easier to work with. So I just found one and downloaded it off the internet and just traced it. Okay. All right. So are there any other questions? 
So next week, we're going to have a little break. Next week is, okay, so Shannon, PEP is part of Embroidery Toolshed. PEP is the full digitizing software. So it's not really an add-on. It is actually the full digitizing software. If you have the free version of Toolshed, um, that's just like a little editing program. So PEP, yes, it is the add-on. It's their, they're actually their big piece of software. It's the main software. Okay. Yeah. And so I think, I think it was fun. I, this was really a fun project. I was just trying to find something fun to do for software. I just, I want you to use your software and don't be afraid to do fun stuff like this. I mean, it, it's simple, you know, it's, it's just a simple thing, but you know, it's not, um, it's not hard, but it, I just thought it was a cute thing. Dad just loved it. It's, it, it's sitting on the chair in the living room. So I had to borrow it tonight. <laughs> and the other ones, I got one at the store now. So, okay. So are there any other questions? Everybody think they can go do it? I bet you can. I bet you can go do your own. Dad is doing fine. I think he's ready for his supper though. We're going to go have some supper. What fonts did I use for my lettering? Um, the actual lettering, um, I used Times for this one, and I used uh, Diana for this one. So, yeah, you can use any font you want. I just thought I wanted the lettering to be fairly simple, you know, straightforward lettering, but you can use anything you want. Okay. All right. So next week, we're going to have a break. It's Memorial Day weekend. So there'll be no class next week. And then the first week in June, remember, we're going to start, um, we're going to have two classes. We're going to, the first on Sunday night, we'll have, what date is that? I can't, I don't have my phone here. I can't see the date. June 5th is going to be the first of the June Bench Buddies. It's the cute little one with the little, um, uh, the little three little squares that have those little strawberries and stuff. They're so darling. And that one's going to be the first one. And then the next night um, will be, we're going to start uh, Sweet Land of Liberty, the bigger pillow, the like the 22 inch pillow. We're going to do that starting on the sixth. Is that the sixth? Yeah. Fifth and sixth. So every Monday night of June, we're actually going to have a class also. So we'll be working on um, Sweet Land of Liberty for that, for those four weeks and then Sunday we'll be doing something else. So, okay. Got to get your act together. <laughs> and yeah, and I have, um, Shannon, I have, we have PEP in stock. Um, and I I have had also used in Brilliance. It's good software. I, I like Dime better just because I think it's a little bit more user friendly. But, you know, I... Di the Imbrilliance is going to be almost as the same price, actually. Um, by the time you buy everything that you need to do everything you want, it's it's basically the same price. But you have to buy more chunks with Imbrilliance. It's just different the way they do. They split it up differently. So, um, but I've been using Dime since two thousand seven. So, all right, we've got we had it a long time. I love it. It's easy to use. Can we order the new cutting tool for scanning cut? Yeah. Uh, oh, you mean the um, rotary blade? <laughs> We're going to have a class on that at the end of June. I hope they're off back order. I sold the last one on Saturday, so I don't have any yet. But Nancy, I, yes, you can. You'd have to call me, though, because <laughs> I don't have. Why don't you call me on Tuesday when I'm in the store, and I'll get you on the list for one as soon as I get it. And I can, I can ship it to you. But why don't you call me at the store so I don't forget? That way we can, I can, yeah, so the class, um, the class for uh, the the end of June is going to be, we're going to talk about the rotary blade. The, you know, the, the rotary blade is really cool. I had not used it before and oh my gosh, it works in it, but it's, and it's kind of funny to watch it. <laughs> the way it works, it's a little different. So we're going to cut out some flowers on uh, the end of June. So that, that'll be, and then that'll be what we need. We need those flowers for the July bench buddies. So that's why I did it in June. So we could actually have a class on that. And then we can do the bench buddies in July because we need some flowers. So that'll be really fun. Okay. All righty. So if you have, if you need, need anything, let me, you know, let me know through Facebook or whatever and um, call me at the store or whatever. And we will see you on June 5th, 
is that the Sunday? Yeah, June fifth, and we'll do our we'll do our first little bench buddy for the month of June. What is the rotary cutter? The rotary blade is the uh, rotary the rotary auto blade. So it's actually a blade that goes in the scan and cut, but it has a little rotary cutter. I mean, the rotary cutter is about this tall. It's just teeny tiny, just awesome. And and so then you can cut felt a lot easier. It's like these, these flowers are cut out of felt. And I was not going to sit there with little scissors and cut around the stitches. So Jan figured out a way to do it with scan and cut because <laughs> I'm lazy. So anyway... Um, but no, the rotary blade is really cool. So in it, and what's neat about it is that it rolls over the fabrics, especially like felt is hard to cut with a blade because it pulls it. It's kind of thick, you know, and then it pulls it around. But the rotary blade just rolls over it and cuts it just like a rotary cutter on our mat, you know, so that it does work really well. And and that's we're going to do that at the end of June. So that that'll be fun. And but I just can't get blades right now. I can't get the 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 blades because they're just on back order. So hopefully they'll be off back order by then. I'll ask Tim. Maybe he knows. So, okay. Is it still okay to use for cotton? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can use it for cotton fabric too. Oh, sure. I'm just going to, yes. So I can, I, I'm just going to cut fab, uh, felt with it. See, felt's always been one of those things that's been difficult to cut in the past. And now they have something that really, it cuts really well now. So no, you can cut any kind of fabric with that rotary blade. It's awesome. I, and it's fun to watch it because it kind of, kind of shoots the mat in and out. It's kind of funny. So we'll work with all models. It will only work with the SDX models, the DX models, the ones that have the auto blade. So if you have an older machine, one of the CMs, no, it will not work with that. Only the, the, it has to be the SDX, the DX models not the CM model. So the older ones, if you still have an older one, it will not work with those. SDX 225, 230D, 325, and 330D. Okay. And then there's also a couple of the DX models that are mass marketed that they work with that too. I think as far as I know, I think it's all the DX models. I have a 230D is what I have. So, okay. All righty. So I'll see you next. I'll see you in a couple weeks and be ready. We're going to do Sweet Land of Liberty. We're going to be ready for getting ready for summer and and um, which one works with the oh the Scan and Cut the new one that has the little sharing business is the three twenty five the three twenty five. So, all right. So I'll see everybody in a couple weeks and we will be doing some, some patriotic stuff and some fun June summer stuff. So thanks everybody. Have a good, have a good couple of weeks. Have a good Memorial day and a safe one. Okay. Bye everybody.